Welcome to this video on why people find programming hard. My name's Andy Wicks and in this program I'm going to look at the human side of programming. Let me explain the problem. It's all down to this chap Lev Vygotsky. Well it isn't his fault really. In actual fact he was just the one who came up with the reason why people find things like programming difficult. He was born 118 years ago in Belarus in a little town called Orsha. Unfortunately for us, he died quite young of tuberculosis. But in the time he was alive, he came up with something called the Zone of Proximal Development. And that's the reason that we humans find programming quite difficult. Let me tell you about the Zone of Proximal Development. Here are the things that you know. Imagine everything you know, how to multiply, how to subtract, how to do complex calculus, all these things that you know so well are in this circle. Then there are the things that we could teach you. To teach you any of those things, we have to build upon what you already know. So there's this zone of what you could know if I was a good teacher. So if I'm a good teacher, I could teach you about, and then you, your circle becomes a bit bigger. We add to that solid bit in the middle. And we do that only in the zone in which you could understand things at the moment. As your knowledge increases, that circle in the middle gets bigger. And the circle around it, that gets bigger too. And so we can teach you more and more things. The amount you can learn increases as, the, as your knowledge goes up. But unfortunately, programming doesn't work that way. Programming is this thing that's outside of your zone of proximal development. You have nothing in your past that would necessarily lead you to associate the ideas that you're going to be manipulating when you program. So now you're going to have to do things from a rather different perspective. What you've got to do when you start programming is to build a bridge between what you do know already, go through that zone of proximal development and build out towards the knowledge that you need, the programming. We're going to start looking at how you build that bridge. The first thing you need to know is how to get from your zone to the zone of programming. And for that, there are some things that you need. You need patience. You cannot do it immediately. It's not a case of pick up a book, read it, and away you go. You need time, because time is needed to get used to the idea of what you're doing. That's called assimilation. And you need realistic expectations. A lot of people go into programming thinking, well, I'm bright, I'm reasonably competent with maths. Uh, it should be a breeze. I'll be able to learn it in an afternoon and then I can go away and do things. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Let me explain. You see, you need patience and time. These things are important. But the thing that really matters is that your expectations are realistic. This is the crucial thing. For that, you need to understand that your programs will not work. You need to understand that they will not work as expected. And you've also got to understand that all of this is normal. It is quite okay. Now, this isn't the case with the other learning that you would necessarily have done. If your teacher asks you what is 2 plus 2 and you say 5 you're wrong and you're naughty and you're no good. Whereas in programming, it's just a piece of uh, silicon, a bit of sand inside your computer that says whether it understands or not. The sand doesn't care whether you've got it right or wrong. If your program doesn't work as expected, shrug your shoulders, say it doesn't give me the output I would expect. If your program doesn't work, it won't run at all. Well, don't worry about it. It will eventually. You just need the patience and the time. The whole thing that you need to get is that this process is normal. 
No one writes a program that runs first time. In fact, that's a lousy way of programming, is to write your program with the expectation that it should work immediately. It won't. So let's look at the reasons that you can't get your program to work. I can't have patience because I have to get this coursework in immediately. I've got to do it next week. Tough. It doesn't work that way. If you need to get stuff done, you need to start early and you need to get your setup right. That's your setup, not the computer's setup, you personally. Hillary's program works, but mine, well, good for Hillary. You can't live your life comparing yourself to other people. That will never work. Your Hillary's may work now, but later on when Hillary's got a problem, your work is going fine. So it's just swings and roundabouts. Get used to it. It may be that Hillary's one of these mega geniuses. Good for Hillary. But if you're not, don't worry about it. It will work. You just need to have patience and time. This is stupid. Why can't I just... And people expect to be able to press a particular button and it will all just magically work. Unfortunately, computers aren't that clever. Computers work at a very low level. It's very easy to get stuck up thinking, there's some clever concept that I haven't understood, something that I really ought to know, but I don't, and that's my fault. No, it's not your fault. You've just got to get used to where you're at. Things will go better over time, and the more you learn, the faster everything goes. There is no magic button. The problem is getting down to the level of the computer, not up to it. If I say to you, the book on the table is, that may be incorrect English, but you've got the idea that there's a book on the table. If you do the equivalent to the computer, it will just stick its little silicon legs in the air and will play dead. If you don't get it exactly right, it won't work. But don't worry about it. You'll get there. I've done it all right, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You haven't done it right. You may have done it right according to you. You may feel that you ought to have done it right. But if it's not working, it's not working. Get over the problem. It doesn't matter that it's not working. It will work, but don't look for the computer to be the one that's at fault. You're just wasting time. If the computer doesn't understand, the computer really doesn't understand. So you've got to turn it into something that it does understand. And you can do that. You're good. Why is it so picky? It hates me. Well, it is just sand in there. It can't hate you. And it is picky because it's not very bright. Going back to the book being on the table, you and I understand things that are fairly obvious to us that a computer just will not. And the reason for that is that a programmer creating the programming language can't program in every possibility of every mistake that every person might make. That's not realistic. Much more realistic is to say, here is a set of rules, this is how I, the programmer, imagine that your programming language will work, and therefore you will follow these rules. If you don't, my program won't work. Then your program won't work. So, you do have to be picky. You have to make sure that you get all the capital letters right, that if it needs semicolons in a certain place, it has semicolons and not colons and commas and things. You've got to get it exactly right. Not nearly right, but really right. And the good news is, yes, you can program. What you do is you cheat intelligently, and that's my skill. You see... A lot of people think that you have to remember computer code, and you really don't. If you had to remember code, I couldn't be a programmer. What you do need is to develop a way of finding the code. You can use the internet, then copy and paste and amend it to your needs, or you can create your own cheat sheet, 
And in that way, you build up a library of things that you've programmed, that you know work, with some good comments in that explain what it is you're doing, and you use the code from your cheat sheets. Professional programmers have these cheat sheets. Bits of code that they've taken from programs that they've run that work. And that way, when you need to do the same task again, you just copy, paste and amend. It's such an easy way of working. You don't have to remember code. You have to understand what it is you're doing. And that you can anyway. So, where should you start? Well, anywhere that works for you. That may be a course, it may be reading a book, or if you're really good, it may be watching superb videos on YouTube. Whatever your preferred method is, if it works for you, it is the correct way. Now you may be on a course and it may be that the person presenting the materials has done it in a particular way. They'll be doing it because they think that is the best way. But it is the best way for them and it may be that there is a different tactic that works better for you. Don't worry about it. If the teacher says, write a program that does this, what they want is a program that does this. How you got to that program is really irrelevant. You may get it by reading a book, you may get it by watching videos, you may go on the internet and look for code that does similar sorts of things. You then have to amend it and it all works fine. If your program works, you've achieved the task. Don't get hung up about doing it in a particular way. Start with a language such as Scratch or Python that don't have startup code. Some languages like Java and the visual languages from Microsoft, there's all sorts of things that you need to have before you can write any code that works. And that can be confusing for beginners. It's fine once you've got the handle on what it is you're doing. These, language, these other languages are excellent. But for starting, use Scratch or Python or something similar which doesn't have all this startup code, you can just carry on with the logic. Now, finally, and that's the bit everybody likes, there are two benefits from code that doesn't work. No, there really are benefits to your code not working. The first is that you learn two things instead of one. You learn what doesn't work and what does. The person who types in the code correctly only learns one thing, what does work, and they don't get to find out how to overcome the errors. Secondly, the buzz is much greater when it does work if you've had problems, and I get a big buzz from most of the programs I write. Now I hope you found this useful. The things to take away is that it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter if you don't understand immediately, what does matter is that you give yourself room and set yourself expectations that are sensible.